of the things we're gonna talk about is neck pain and neck discomfort. If you look at this picture here, we're looking at several structures that get ignored. Everyone looks at the neck and the part that gets sore is this red part here, all right? So you can massage these till you're blue in the face. It helps for the moment, but what happens is our culprits a lot of times lie downstream. Culprits being our pec minor and our pec major and our neck flexors, these guys right here. When these muscles become tight and these muscles become inactive, it creates a postural distortion or a postural adaptation that doesn't always benefit these poor neck muscles in the back. So we're gonna look at how to address these and how to change patterns so our neck can move the way neck's supposed to and do not become glued to our torso. So if you look at Mike here, if he rolls his shoulders forward, kind of like a silver back and rolls his in, and we look at what that does, go ahead and straighten those arms out, good. I straighten those arms up. Now a lot of this is a real common position of holding a cell phone, texting. You may be doing this position, checking your Instagram right now. Uh, it's steering wheel, computer, blowing out of the gym. Really hitting a lot of extra chest and a lot less muscles in the back. Especially if you are an office worker or driver and then you just hit the bench press all day or push-ups all day, we're gonna start to get this adaptive posture and wonder why we have neck pain. So go ahead and look up, Mike, as high as you can. With our head, the rolled, shoulders rolled forward, you see it engages his traps a lot. He's now wearing his traps like Beats by Dre. They're really tucked by his ears, <laughs> okay? And now go ahead and look straight ahead and look to your right and look to your left. Now what I want you to do is look straight ahead. I want you to bring your shoulders back and down tuck your shoulders into your back pockets, and I want you to pull your chin backwards that way. So that required him to use his neck flexors. That required him to let go of his pec minor and major. And now you can see his traps are out of his ears. So how do we get that to stay that way? How do we get that neck range of motion? So go ahead and look up as high as you can, and look straight ahead, and look at the camera. And that's range of motion. So what we want to do is release those pec muscles. The pec muscles, pec minor is going to come from these ribs right into the humerus, and then also the pec major will come on the sternal fibers. So Mike here is going to push that against the wall, and we're going to be right there, and he's going to put that right arm behind his back, and roll left and right, right below that clavicle Ooh. or collarbone. Nice and gentle. We don't go into the shoulder girdle, so that's about as far as you want to go. There's a lot of vascular bundles in that area and we don't want to compromise the joint. On a scale of nine to, you know, zero to 10, 10 being a lot of pain, we don't want to be above a five. So be nice to yourself. We just want to get some sensory input and get the tissues hydrated and get the tension recalibrated on those structures. So we'll use a ball like this, gonna be right underneath, just through there. Not into here, not down in here, right through there. Ooh. The other way we can do is take your right arm and start reaching up like the itsy bitsy spider. Climb up the wall. Good. And then back down. And you can see that's going to also get more pec major and different fibers. There's a yoga block. Put that below. Put the ball again right here. And we're going to take this arm and we're going to start to bring it up. And we're going to reach up here and back. And we can play around with the angle of the thumb and the angle of the shoulder, and we want to just pin right below the collarbone. So we would do this because we're trying to allow our chest to come back, and then we'd want to strengthen these muscle groups, lats and back. So this would not be something you do before chest day, it'd be something you do before back day, a pulling day, or again, with neck pain. So we want to allow this to come back. So the second muscles we want to relax are the neck extensors, pulling up like that, and we're going to use two balls in a sock, yoga block. Uh, this is something I give the credit out to Jill Miller, uh, the Yoga Tune-Up Balls, fantastic book, and she's got great work. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, you take the ball block here, and you're gonna put it right in the crook of the neck, and knees bent. And so we're gonna do what she calls yeses and nos. Uh, and so you're gonna just look up and say yes, and Nice and easy, again, pain level should be around five or 10, or five, no more than six out of 10. And then let's do some nose. <laughs> Good. So another area is you can get, is you can slide the balls up and get your cell occipitals, 
put your hand or your forearm on there and just push a little bit of pressure. There's a lot of nerve endings in suboccipital, so we don't want to crush that, but it's not bad to get some input there. And so we can put a little bit more pressure on the nose. You can also use your feet and slide up and down into the balls. So take your hand away and then just push your body up towards the, bo towards the block and wow. down and up and down. Get some rolling action there too. Mm. Off. Release the pecs, release this area. So what we need to do is strengthen the neck flexors, which is gonna be your sternocleidomastoid mastoid and some of the deep neck flexors as well. And we then also want to activate our lower trap and our shoulder retractors to bring these down. Again, we activate them after we release them because if we try to activate post-release, we still are fighting tight tissues. So one of the ways I like to activate the neck flexors is taking two fingers and getting on the insertion and just rubbing really fast. I'm not going very hard, but going fast on right above the collarbone and then right behind the ear. Nice and fast right there on the neck flexors, right underneath the collarbone, and then I'll get right behind the ear. If you feel a throbbing or a zing up your eye, then get your finger off of there. That's a nerve or an artery. Then we want to strengthen that, so we're going to take this band, put our thumbs throughout that, and put it behind our head. We want to make sure we're sitting nice and straight, we're looking straight ahead, and we're just going to try to pull our ears over our shoulders and hold it there. That's a little bit too far, so we're going to come a little bit less, and come and hold right there. Good, and we're trying to make a double chin. So it's not for looks, it's for functionality. And it should not cause headaches. So I want you to ease into it. Don't try to really push hard. Just feel those muscles activate. That's even right there. Good. So you can do it against a wall so you don't push back too far. As you can see, I'm holding my hand there. Do you want me to Good.